Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a quick fix for a dull, foggy photo in Lightroom. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can turn an image that looks something like this into something that looks like this. And we're going to do it in the Develop panel in Lightroom. The original of this image is very lacklustre. It's been shot from the top of the London eye and there's not a lot of detail here that is visible and it's not crisp and it's not colourful. But this is the kind of result that we're going to be aiming for and we're going to do it in Lightroom. So let's get started. This is a virtual copy of that other image and we're going to work on it. The first thing I'm going to do is to white balance this image. So I'm clicking on the white balance selector here in the basic panel and I'm just going to click on things that I think should probably be a neutral grey. And it's a little bit difficult in this image because there's a lot of blue grey and a lot of pink grey so I'm just really trying to seek out something that is going to give me a point for white balancing this image. And I think this is probably not a bad sort of setting. We've added a little bit of warmth and a little bit of magenta into the image. So for now I'm going to call that good. Now one of the problems with images that are sort of dull and foggy like this is that they lack contrast. And here in the histogram here we're seeing that there are no blacks and precious little shadows in the image as well. So I'm going to drag the black slider towards the black. So I'm going to darken them by dragging to the left. And that brings some blacks into the image and already you can see that that's been a tonal improvement in the image. The shadows could perhaps be deepened a little bit too but you can experiment with what makes sense for your particular image. I'm going to drop the shadows down a little bit as well. And then let's have a look at the highlights. Well brightening those a little bit and perhaps brightening the whites as well will add again a little bit more contrast into the image. Now another slider that will pack a lot of contrast and a lot of help for this particular image is clarity. In a negative direction it softens the image but in a positive direction it adds some mid-tone contrast and that's one of the things that this image is suffering from a lack of. So I'm going to wind clarity up to probably about 30 or 40. Vibrance too could be adjusted. Vibrance is under saturated colours and pretty much in this image apart from the greens here everything is classifying as an under saturated colour. So I can add a little bit of colour using Vibrance and I could also add a little bit using Saturation too. If I'm finished pretty much as I am right now in this basic panel, I'll go to the Tone Curve because the Tone Curve also has tools that I can use to add a little bit more crunch to this image to get rid of its sort of foggy look. And I'm going to opt for one of these point curve adjustments so I'm going to try a medium contrast. And that adds a sort of shallow S curve into this tone curve and the result is that the image becomes a little bit sharper in the mid-tones. The contrast is enhanced a bit. I think strong contrast is probably going to go a bit too far so I'm actually going to take that back and just settle for a medium contrast here. Now right now I've pretty much dealt with the things that are global adjustments to this image because I've really got two very separate areas. The Houses of Parliament here are in a pretty good state but the background of this image is still very foggy and dull. So I want to edit these two areas separately. So I'm going to the Adjustment Brush. So I'm going to click on the Adjustment Brush here. I'm just going to test the size of the brush. Well it's very small right now so I'm going to make it much bigger. I'm going to add a very slight feather to it and I am going to turn on Auto Mask. And I'm going to click here somewhere in the background here just to pin this adjustment down. And I'm going to turn on Show Selected Mask Overlay because I want you to be able to see what I'm painting. And right now what I'm settling on painting is this sort of foggy background and I want to do everything really pretty much in the top third of the photo other than the towers that belong to the Houses of Parliament because I don't want those to be brought into this adjustment because they're in the foreground and they're not subject to the same problems as the background. 
So I'm just going to make a rough paint job here. If this were your image, you would be making a better job of this than me and you would be really working in around these areas to make sure that you got all these areas. If you do, as I have just done, and paint some of the towers in, because I've actually painted in these two towers here, you can hold the Alt or Option key and just paint over them to undo. So I'm reasonably happy with this selection right now. So I'm going to turn off the mask overlay. And now we're just seeing the original image, but it is the selected area that we are going to be working with. So we're going to do the same sort of things here. We're just going to add a boost to them. So we're going to add some clarity and we're going to add some contrast. And we may also add some sharpness and perhaps even a little bit of saturation. Now that is helping the background to this image to be a whole lot crisper. But you can see too that it's a little on the blue side. So you may want to add a little bit of warmth and maybe even a little bit of magenta. And that will give it a warming effect. And when you're done, just click Done. So that's taken care pretty much of the background of the image. Now I'm concerned about the Houses of Parliament and I'm going to deal with them the same way. Click on the adjustment brush, click here to lock the adjustment down to give it a sort of starting point if you like. And now I'm going to start painting over the Houses of Parliament. And I want to select pretty much here the brownie bits but not the blue. So I don't want to select the roof so much as I want to select the brickwork on these towers. And again, you will be making a much better selection than I am making because you'll be spending a little bit more time on it. I'm just trying to do this so that you can get an indication as to how you might look at an image like this and how you might make the adjustments. Now I'm even though this is not my photo, I'm very familiar with these particular buildings and I know that they're a little bit more visually exciting than they seem to be in this image and I think it is because the colour is not quite bright enough, it's not sharp enough and it just really simply lacks something right now. So I'm just going to see if we can get a little bit of that something back into the building. So again, having made this sort of rough selection, I'm going to turn my selection off or turn the visibility of it off by deselecting Show Selected Mask Overlay. So now I'm affecting just these buildings and I'm going to start off with adjusting the exposure up a little bit. And I'm going to look at contrast too and saturation, everything that's going to enhance this building and perhaps even a little bit of clarity. Now one of the things that I think that this building could probably use is a slight pinky colour. So I'm going to go to my colour here and I'm going to target a slight orangey sort of pink to give it some warmth in the buildings and I'm just going to close that down. So let's say that that's what we want. I'm just going to click close. Now let's look and see how far we've come. I'm going to press the backslash key and that will show us the before image and this is the after image. What we did was brighten and crisp up the colours in the image using the basic panel adjustments and added some contrast using the tone curve. And then we looked at adding adjustment brush settings to add localised adjustments for the image. And if we thought that we had not gone far enough, we could go back and add more adjustment brush settings. So if we thought that we could still improve the background here a little bit, we could click here and make another adjustment over the top of the first. And you can layer as many adjustments over each other as you like, building up on the effects. So adding back in the same effects as you added in before, a bit of extra contrast, a bit of clarity, a bit of sharpness, and then if that's not enough, go back and do it yet again. 
the adjustment brush for this image is the better choice because we've got towers here and we don't have a nice straight horizon which would lend itself to the graduated filter. Really the adjustment brush is going to be the easier option for fixing this image. But we've looked creatively at this image, determined what we want to do with it and then gone ahead and used the tools available to us in Lightroom to affect those changes. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this Lightroom video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on this channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.